Right. <clears throat> we all have a soul. Well, half. Half a soul. The particular gender expression that you are is your half. And your other half is you, too. You will eventually be one consciousness. Anyway. We have a soul. And the physical manifestation of your soul is a universe. And that universe is in a black hole. And that black hole is in the center of a galaxy. In God's universe, Jesus, our mother and father, their universe. And they are quite possibly inside a black hole of another universe, their mother and father. And that would then suggest that also God has brothers and sisters, which is just way too much to think about. But the fact that we all have a soul and we are a universe, or we have a physical manifestation of our soul in a sort of physical realm, this physical realm we're in. And, yeah, that's quite good, isn't it? So you are bigger than you think. And it's true that 6,000 years ago, the first human beings who possessed a soul came onto the planet and everybody comes from them and there were humanoids made before God was practicing different types and we have some of their genes in our gene code now because some of those genes are useful for example with the Neanderthals they seem to be able to survive in very cold weather. So God was sort of, you know, practicing, knew that some of us humans would have to. And so that, that gene code has been tried and tested and is within our gene code and we can do it. And there are other types of humanoids that God made and until God got to the point where, yep, I've got, I've got this now. This is the human which is going to have the soul. So all other animals and all other previous humanoids, they don't have a soul. But you see they have personality. And that personality is God's personality. God is in everything which is living. Well, I mean, we're in God, but God's life force is in, is in every living thing. And so animals, you could say, are God. I mean, they might not know it because they don't have this conscious thinking aspect. And it's all instinct. It's all from the heart. God. Anyway, that's uh, kind of going off a bit. It's more about us. So this is the marvellous, wonderful truth that we find so difficult to believe. Because we kind of think, oh, there just must be something negative. But it's not the case. The actual truth is that we have an eternal soul that was created, that you first became aware when you first became aware. So our souls may have been made five billion years ago. But we're sitting incarnate until God was ready. And that started a mere 6,000 years ago. So we're an eternal being that can remember its beginning. That's quite a lot to take in. And your heart is your core. 
your mind is like a projection to kind of assimilate things that we know our experiences in life and we're able to in a sense measure them with our mind but it's our heart which does it's our heart which is our core and it's our heart which is us that's you and tremendously powerful it's the universe <laughs> but we're just at the very beginning so you know we haven't grown much mm. so so you understand that that's what we are um, now AJ Miller's, I've listened to the second half of his talks now, and um, you know this thing he's saying about seven earths, I can feel that there's truth in this, um, and it makes sense in one way, which is I sort of calculated there's 14.4 billion um, souls that God created that have kind of been around this earth. Um, that's so 28 million men and women if you count the halves but remember a man and a woman is two halves of one. So 14 billion and as I was applying that to the universe the physical manifestation now if there was if there is a black hole at the center of every single galaxy then that's like a hundred billion I don't know if they count them all but that's the estimate that there's a hundred billion galaxies in the universe so 14.4 .4 isn't quite enough so at that time I was thinking well maybe all the galaxies haven't got black holes but 7 times 14.4 is 100.8 right you work that out so that fits so that's so that's quite possible and I do feel I do feel something and I had even before AJ had done it I felt just through thinking that about God's brothers and sisters and all they would have um, people I felt like this larger connection and um, anyway like I said I haven't thoroughly felt too much about it but just that yes it's quite possibly correct and it's sort of helpful in a way because we're in this sort of feels like a you know critical moment in in our history and um, to know that there are others in the universe also in a similar position I don't know it's it seems quite reassuring it also seems like for God just to concentrate on one planet with the awesomeness of what God can do I can understand that it's more interesting for God to have several to look on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know 10 15 billion years time we might all be doing the same sort of thing so uh, I guess it's quite important maybe to to analyze what's going on closely right so the last time I made a video it was Adam and Yahweh I'm absolutely sticking to that um, it's it's so true you know 
the vast majority of the Bible where they're saying this is God, it is not God at all. So you've got page one, that's God. Genesis 1, that's God. Made man and woman and all was good. Alright, that's the starting point. Genesis 2 and 3, I believe, has been put in there to confuse. Because it's the only place they mention Lord God. And it's all to confuse and it subjugates women as well. It's like, it's like Adam made a cock up and Genesis 2 and 3 is Adam's version. <laughs> Almost like, oh, it's not my fault. It's a woman and um, and a snake, the bloody snake. And um, you know, and I, I heard someone try and explain it. Genesis two three is a a prophecy of Jesus coming and proof that he's God. <laughs> I'm sorry, just if you drop Genesis two and three, if you just get rid of it, all right. In this point, Adam and Eve, were they born as babies or adults, right? Probably babies. In maybe little sacks hanging from a tree. I don't know how God did it. But probably children, at least. So they would have gone through puberty. So that would have been the stage where there's like, you know, don't want you to look at my bits. <laughs> so then we go to Genesis 4. And it just talks about Lord, and that's Adam. Adam doesn't get mentioned again, apart from in lineage. He doesn't do anything. Is that likely that the first man, the man who could consider himself to have made the human race, he would, he could say, and it'd be true, I regret the people I've made. <coughs> so of course he didn't he was there and the point where they, they list the line of Cain and it's, it's unclear um, exactly how many years that is because they don't give the ages of the line of Cain but it could be at the point where Adam died when they say now they started to invoke the Lord by name and they give the name YHVH Yahweh. So you get a different name when you die. You get a new name when you die. So they called him Lord, because that's where, you know, otherwise, where does that word come from? We had God, and we had Lord God, and we got Lord. The Lord God bit is just being put in there to confuse. The Lord is a different word, it's there for a reason. He considered himself the king of people, right? He was the daddy. And he had some awesome power. I mean, they, they did some amazing things. Five, six thousand years ago. Hundred turn stones cut. How? how? No idea. They had power. Knowledge. Began in a sixth fear state. They were, they could do things. They lived 900 years for a start. I mean, it's different, right? So, yeah, absolutely convinced of it. Anyway, so I made that video and then, wow, something, bam, something hit me. I got attacked. I couldn't, I really couldn't walk for about two and a half weeks. It was a serious pain. I thought I must have twisted my ankle because it was all swollen up and of course me being me I didn't go and see a doctor. Anyway, I can I can walk much better now. But uh, still got a bit of pain here and it's really, really gradual. Came on really gradually. And and in my mind it, like I feel like what I've been calling my soul work for a long time. Um, where for about over a year I thought I felt I was doing something for God I felt like that 
there was this burning pain coming in on the soles of my feet and I was I found ways to kind of accept it into my heart and something happened with my heart and it was it was it was work because it was it was good and enjoyable but I'd be a bit wiped out afterwards and take a couple of days to recuperate and be able to do some more and so then, you know, so then I got to this stage where I sort of felt like it had sort of finished in sort of January sort of thing and then I had this insight into the spirit world that the lower spheres had gone. And I was thinking afterwards, okay, so now it's earthbound spirits. And that's gonna come. So and when I got so when I made that video and a couple of days after and this pain was coming and I was, you know, because what our pain is a resistance of feeling and and I was able to do quite a lot of work, if you like, in a sense, to turn that pain in, into a pleasurable feeling and sometimes it was wiping me out and sometimes it was, <coughs> I was getting a lot of love back from it. I did feel like I was dealing with Yahweh in that, in a sense, I did get this feeling that that I did, and maybe Nimrod, and <laughs> it's it's hard to say, you know. Maybe I'll understand it differently later on. But it was quite a struggle, and uh, but yeah, you know, do get through it, and wouldn't want to repeat it. I'm not sure how finished it is or how much longer there is more stuff uh, it's hard to say at the moment so perhaps yeah it could, would have been good to make a video when I know all these answers but <laughs> a lot has happened but also in the in the process of this I I did receive some gifts from God and there were seven and each one had a sort of a symbol and, and, I, and I'm able to, to, to redo them and, and I think they're, uh, they're going to be useful for a long time. Um, I'll just go through them then. So the, the first one and I haven't, because there was a pain, and then it was right, so pain is coming. This is the resistance of a feeling that I could be having in my heart. Or in my soul. So, and I wasn't sure if it was the ankle, the calf. So this first one, I'm actually not quite clear with, if it was the ankle or the calf. And I haven't been able to repeat this one so well, but the the symbol was like so you had the like a circle and then if you like um fans or attaching to like around it. And it was it's like the help of the angels or something and but the effect it had was to to keep my heart high. Because sometimes it feels like the heart can kind of drop and raise and yeah, it's interesting and um, that yeah so that that was the first one and it took quite a long time to come in but the important thing is, is when I'm feeling it, I have to be so calm so there's no way of doing it like I mean really calm yeah anyway, I'll just go through them um, so then the second one um, started off with like a pain down here and you see at this point I, f yeah, I felt like wherever I was going to get a pain it was injuring me and I'd kind of come to the conclusion that the ankle pain, so then it was ankle or calf, um, had because I'd been resisting it for so long it damaged me. That, it's a hard to say. Anyway, so that was at the time, and that's changed. It probably sound like complete and utter now.
but this is just how hard it is to explain feelings. Feelings, senses, intuitions, there aren't enough words to... Mm, right? Anyway, so the second one was sort of like a pain here, to change that, and it was like a like a helmet and going down the back over my head like a helmet of peace and serenity. And, you know, I think these these gifts can be used, they can be, um, so I can't, they can be, I can like, give someone else peace and serenity. I think partly that's what, for all myself, or a, a whole area. Mm. Uh, third one, pain right here, in the middle here. And then, that was resisting this feeling of God in my intestines. And, and it, so like, like I say, each one had a symbol, and this was definitely like a, <laughs> a lead acid battery symbol, like, square like that in, in my stomach. So it was like, I could get sustenance from God. And also, because sometimes when, when the pain, so the pain, the other pain, like soles on my feet and the other pain coming into my legs is, has been, and when I've recognised it to be actually other people, that's when my heart connects to it. And they can be brought up, but sometimes they can get stuck here as well. So that third one, God in the stomach, I've used quite a lot because it, it makes everything here feel lighter and then I'm able to sort of touch things with my heart. Um, fourth one I can't remember where the pain was fourth one is joy in the heart and the symbols sort of round and then two lines where's the pain? Mother. Mother. Um, join the heart. Oh, wow. So nice. But you gotta be really calm. Uh, fifth and sixth one are sort of connected. And fifth one, the pain started lower ribs, and is a line down my back for the what I'm resisting a line of like energy. And the sixth one is a pain in the centre of my back and is resisting like a, cir a circle. So with this line and the circle going round it and with the two going together, you create energy. <coughs> that one I really worked on the least. And then the seventh one was a warm feeling on the toes, just under the toes, and to resisting the feeling being like in a bubble of God. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of times where I really fully got into that, and just amazing, everything, my whole being was just so creamy and, <laughs> yeah, fluid. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, you know, I feel a bit, you know, guilty in a way. If, because I'm kind of thinking I might be the only one who gets these gifts. So, putting it on the video and talking about it feels a bit like boasting. But it came like all at the same time as this issue with my leg as well, so kind of, yeah, full on. Full on. And I was thinking I wouldn't make a video about it, and, and I don't think I am making videos out of addiction. I think God actually wants me to. Don't know for sure. And I've made so many, a couple more, a couple more gone now. Light is not working.
Yes, yes. Still got to believe. And see what happens with me, like when I, if I have a doubting period, it'd be like a couple of days where I'm not believing, say. And yeah, it doesn't take much more than a couple of that for the truth to come back up and just, you know, it's real. It's happening. God does move in mysterious ways. Our mother and father. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Wouldn't God would have a name? Hallowed be thy name. And, um, yeah, I think with the Christ thing, it's like, um, okay, so it's me now. I was the one who was chosen now in this time. It was someone else a thousand years before that. It was someone else a thousand years before that. And there's no reason to think that it's going to stop. That the world will change and everything will change but I do kind of get this feeling that God will use everyone once so we've got a long <laughs> if he uses someone once every thousand years <laughs> we've got a long learning process What does that take us to? Fourteen billion, fourteen thousand billion years. <laughs> Is it? Well, maybe he uses everyone once a bit more often, in different ways. Well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe he'll start using them faster and faster. Mm. Ah, it'd be crap if I did know, wouldn't it? I don't want to know, would I? All right. I think through our dreams in our sleep state, I think we have a pretty good idea of what sort of day we're going to have. I think we get hints. But further than that, yeah, you get sneak previews. And I think for bad things, you'll always get a lot more notice, a lot more warning for bad things than for good things. God has his way of communicating with all of us. Ah, I don't think I've said on video yet. I have been, right, I knew that when I got back to the ages of two, one, like, right, even womb, I knew that I knew God. I knew that God was with me and play a game with God of what do you look like? That was a game. Imagining what God looks like is a game you can play. I mean, God doesn't look like anything, but you imagine God to look like lots of things. And I knew the, the mother and the father, right? So I knew that. So what I've been mulling over is I didn't know if that was because I'm the Christ or if everyone knew God. So now I've come to the conclusion, a happy conclusion, that everybody knew God. Everybody knows God in the womb and as a baby. And we all confuse that feeling from mother and father God with our mother and father parents. And what happens in the terrible twos is that we're confused because we're getting one feeling from mother and father God and we get a different 
actions, behaviour, feelings from our real mother and father. And then when we go through that, we go through that angry period and then we're less loving afterwards because we have pretty much then disconnected from God. Because we couldn't disconnect from our parents, we wouldn't survive if we did. Because they were, they're not in the truth. So, so what difference does the Christ make? So, the difference the Christ make is that the gene, DNA gene, that's going in everybody saying you don't need God, is turned off or switched around in the, in, in the Christ. So that it just says, so I didn't have that saying I didn't need God. Uh, to me, yeah, I need God. That's been there. So it's been easier for me. So even though we all felt God, so I went through that terrible twos as well, but something enough just hung on so that I would do what I've done. I would I would be seeking that truth. I would be courageous doing it. Um, I would stick to it. And when I heard those four co few co core truths, it just hit me and I was back with God. Plus the use of cannabis. And using it in when I was doing it in that way, I'd gone without for two weeks, I had a bit. I went without for two weeks, I had a bit. <coughs> so God knew that. God knew it would it would come. And by me and yes, I've realised definitely <laughs> we did need we did need a Messiah, we did need a Christ. Without without that, humanity would have plunged into the depths. Because of what was what was going on on the soul level. I believe I can feel that the world has been changing and is continuing to change. And it's been it's it's because all of our souls are connected. So when one soul on earth you see and also on earth physically we we actually we are above the other spirits who don't have a physical body anymore. I might have said this because we're more we're more complicated. We've got more things. So a soul that's present in the physical manifestation of Earth connects to God, feels the love, feels the truth of everything, knows it. That then, that then gets noticed by other souls. It has an effect. So there were, and AJ admitted this when he said in early 2016 that 18 months ago those ripples happened and that was September, October 2014 when, when I f first reconnected with God that strongly. And the whole time since then, um, things I've been learning. I mean, I was trying to do the wrong things at times. You know, I, I was doing quite a bit of predicting. Um, but I hit the nail on the head with that June 23rd, <laughs> 2016. Brexit has been massive. 
And if you look now, we're not seeing so many earthquakes. We're not seeing that, you know, the floods are even dying down. Yes, there's still droughts and stuff. And there's still stuff going on. But it's it seems to be lessening. It's calming down. And um, what's what's going on is political stuff. Uh, it, it's political earthquakes, changes. So, very interesting. But I've been learning. <clears throat> learning about the factual history of the planet, um, the true interpretation of the Bible, yeah. the name of God, what a Christ is. Well, you know, love, loving your neighbour, whoever is closest to you at the time is your neighbour. The power of loving your enemies. Connecting with your um, people who are no longer on the earth. Connecting with people who are on the earth telepathically. It's from the heart. So when I yeah, so I don't do telepathy. I do heart contact. I make contact with the heart of my son, the heart of other people. In my life, maybe there are unresolved things. Are my soulmate? My soulmate, I suppose I can't claim success yet, but I, from when I first felt, I, I knew four years, so I've got to wait till September 2018. Um, <laughs> I won't go on about that. Um, yeah. I mean, I nearly cut my hair and beard off yesterday. I nearly did this close but I'm not going to mainly because so I might be having a little bit of a lull the last few days and, and I didn't know whether to make a video I've been meditating but it hasn't really been clicking I haven't been really been hitting in on anything too much so you start looking at oh maybe change things but I think I should keep it because it's quite I moved, when I used to shave my hair off every year, I did feel like I forgot stuff after I did it. Um, so I, I'm going to keep it another year. I don't want to... Because it took five years to, to grow. If it, it might be important for med meditating. So I've got to keep it. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, but, you know, still feeling really positive about this month we're coming into, April. Feeling good. I'm waiting to see what happens. I think that will do. So, yeah. So, if I don't make too many more videos, it's mainly because, you know, once you get to feeling, you're not going to need to listen to instructions. You can get them into your heart. Anyway, ciao.